Blender 4.3 introduces a new UV unwrapping algorithm called Minimum Stretch. It's designed to improve upon the existing UV unwrap mechanisms already present. This algorithm is based on SLIM, which is Scalable Local Injective Mappings. It aims to minimize distortion during the unwrapping process. UV mapping is the process of converting a 3D object into a 2D representation in order to apply textures accurately and precisely onto 3D complex topologies. This can be achieved through simple projection methods or more advanced unwrapping algorithms. However, unwrapping a 3D object into a 2D space presents challenges, such as distortions where some UV polygons may become compressed or misshapen compared to the original 3D topology. As mentioned earlier, Blender 4.2 already features two effective unwrapping routines, conformal and angle-based. Conformal, the older method, is based on the least square conformal mapping, or LSCM, algorithm. Angle-based was introduced to address some of the limitations of conformal, often yielding better results. However, both methods are still prone to producing distortions in certain areas. The new minimum stretch UV unwrapping routine aims to improve upon the distortion problem. It seeks to unwrap complex 3D surfaces onto a 2D plane while preserving geometric properties such as shape and area and preventing overlapping UV polygons in this 2D space. Let's take a look at a simple object that I've generated. It's closed volume and I've already applied some seams which is something that you'll need to do to a closed volume in order to be able to unwrap it. So let's go ahead and see how each of the new mechanisms work out to unwrap this. So I've already created one UV map and I've named it conformal. A key selects all the polygons. We'll just come up here and do unwrap. I think the menus have been reorganized a little bit here in 4.3, so that may be new come down to conformal, which again is the original mechanism. It's the oldest UV unwrapping mechanism around, and in some other applications it'll be called LSCM, or least square conformal mapping. When we select that, it quickly unwraps it. But one of the things that conformal will tend to do is produce these asymmetric results on a symmetrical object, and you would have to spend a bit of time reworking it. We could certainly do that. We could take the center spine here of this and flatten it, and we could have it rerun the algorithm, and we could eventually get it worked out. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, and we're going to call the next one angle based, and we're going to regenerate the UVs here. So press U, and then come down to angle based, and you'll see that angle based improves upon LSCM, conformal, produces a symmetrical result. So that's better, but it still kind of is producing some distortion we can see here relative to this central area. It sort of fans out. So let's come down here and click to create another a third UV map, and we will call this minimum just to make that easy. Come back into the 3D viewport U, and then let's select minimum stretch, and that is what minimum stretch does. So let's take a look at some other examples. Let's go ahead now and unwrap this hand. Let's come into edit mode and we can see that I've already applied the seam down the middle and at the top you have to have seams on closed objects. A key to select all the polygons. Let's go ahead and create an initial UV map and we'll call this one conformal for our original algorithm. U key and then we will select conformal and it gives us that which clearly has distortion. We could resolve that by spending a bit of time kind of wrestling with it, but let's come over now and create a new one called Angle Based, which is the newer algorithm that Blender has had for a while. And before we look at that, let's come back up here to Conformal. I already have a texture set up with a checker on it, and let's take a look at what this looks like. Well, we can clearly see the distortion here, but it really shows up as this texture distortion on the object. So that's, that's no good. So let's come back over here to angle base. The object is still selected. I just have overlays turned off. Do a U and then angle based. 
and that certainly gives us a better looking UV map. We need to switch over here and take a look at what that looks like with the texture applied. So that's definitely better, but you can see the checkers here are a little bit larger and they get a little bit more compressed here and then they get kind of larger. So let's see if we can improve upon this with the new algorithm. So let's come over now, create the third UV map, which we will call minimum. We still have everything selected. I just have overlays turned off. So now we'll press the U key and we will select minimum stretch and it recalculates and gives us this result. But when we switch over the camera icon here, so we see the material applied to it, it gives us just a generally better distribution of this checkers pattern across the object. So again, let's recompare to angle based. Angle based has more tightly compressed, smaller checkers here, larger and then larger. And especially compared to conformal, the, this new minimum is clearly superior. In this next example, I have a model of an ear, and this is the conformal UV unwrap mechanism applied. And we get clear sort of size differences in the checker pattern. So the next one will be angle based and that's a little bit better but we still see this distortion of larger checkers there against smaller checkers so now when we use the minimal algorithm the new one we get that so it's definitely done a better job of trying to even out the texture across the surface here we have this chest piece you can see i've already applied seams to it to get it unwrapped and we can already see the conformal unwrap results so let's come over here and actually apply our checkers material to this and we'll be able to see what this looks like let's turn off overlays and there you can see that the lscm conformal really produces a lot of distortion so let's come down here and take a look at what angled angle base does for us and that improves on it that definitely gives us a better distribution of the checkers across the surface. Well, let's take a look now. Let's rotate this around and let's take a look at what happens when we go to the new minimum. And it produces the best results so far of just giving us a very good distribution of our checkers across the surface that is generally pretty consistent in terms of the size of those squares. So let's take a look at this chess piece. We can see that I already have our three UV maps enabled, conformal, angle-based, and minimal. So conformal, when we take a look at this with the texture applied, we can clearly see that there is quite a variation in terms of the size, and we'd really like this to be a little bit more even. So let's come over to angle-based, and we get this. That's definitely an improvement, but you can see around the ear there's still it's still probably not as good as it can be. So now when we come down to the new minimal, then this is what we end up getting. So it's definitely done the best job here of getting that checker pattern distributed across the surface in, an, in as an even way as possible. In this final example, we're gonna spend a bit more time on this one. Let's go into edit mode and let's add a UV map that we will call conformal for our first one let's come in now and just let's turn off overlays press the u key and then let's do conformal and there we get that that looks actually not bad i mean the the unwrap mesh itself looks pretty good let's come over here now and actually look at it and we can see that the checker pattern is distributed pretty evenly except for around the nose the mouth and the chin it's obviously a little bit larger okay so let's come down and look at what angle base would do so we'll call this angle base let's activate that for the 3d object and then we'll hover back over here u key and then we will do angle based and in this particular case angled base didn't do hugely different we can clearly see that it's still got distortion so if we come back and we cycle up to conformal it it's it's only marginally different so this is where we'll, we'll come over and we'll create the new one which we will call minimum okay we'll 
press the U key, and then we'll invoke a minimum stretch. And then let's activate this. And there we can see that it's right off the bat, it's done a better job of giving us an even distribution of that checker pattern across the surface. But you know what? I think there's a possibility that we might even be able to get a little bit better than that. So let's see if we can improve this a little bit. You're going to notice under vertex groups, I've already got one set up called nose and mouth. We're going to paint this. We're not going to try and assign them, but we're going to kind of get this general area of the nose, mouth, and chin. We need to come over here. Let's make sure and turn on our overlays and we will switch over to weight paint. So what we're going to do is let's turn weight value up to one. And I have myself just in basic paint mode right here. And then I can come over and I can just paint the vertex weights on the object. Okay, so we can just kind of come over and we can play with sort of different weights and the size of the brush. So this is just the area that I'd really maybe like to have it focus on just a little bit more. And then if you want, we can come over and we can maybe blur this just a little bit. So this is the fun part about this process. Let's come back over here to paint wait, maybe this I'll take the lips and I'll make them red, something about like that. Okay. So this is the weight values for this vertex group called nose and mouth. So let's come back over into edit mode. Let's take advantage of that weight painting. Let's jump over here to the UV viewport and select everything by pressing the A key. We're going to run all of this back through the minimum unwrap mechanism. So you do minimum stretch. It'll pull up our dialog box here. But in this case, we're going to tie in to that weight painting we just did here in nose and mouth by invoking importance weight. You need to specifically type in nose and mouth, the value that we just put in. Now, nothing's going to happen because the weight factor is zero. But watch what happens as I grab this and I begin pulling this up it will use that weight to try and give more importance to producing less distortion on the nose, mouth, and the chin. So that's what the weight importance factor does, is it allows you to target areas that you specifically tell it, we really want this to be refined in this particular location. So once we're done with that, then let's come over here and align this whole map so it's vertical. Let's come up to the UV menu and then down to align rotation, come to method, and we're going to invoke edge, and it'll align that like that. And there we go. So let's just move this over. Now when we look at this, we can see that this is probably the best of the three methods. When we come back and compare, you can obviously see this comparison between the three different methods. So I hope you found this to be a useful tutorial on the upcoming improvements to UV mapping in Blender 4.3.